Hi guys, today in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use normalized transformation. At the end of the session, I'll be showing some of the useful tips for your mapping development. Normalized transformation can be used in two different ways. First, it can be used to read data from a COBOL or with some file. Secondly, it can be used just like any other transformation within the mapping. <coughs> just like the name says, normalized transformation can be used to normalize your data. For example, if you have multiple occurring data, in your source data, this transformation can be used to normalize your data and can be used to store your data into different tables. Let me explain the process of normalization with an example. Okay, here in this example, we have the customer credit card file, and if you see here, we have a customer data as well as the customer credit card details. And if you see closely, we, we can have up to three credit card information per customer, and all this information is stored within a single record so we can clearly say this information stored in the customer credit card file is not normalized so what i'm going to do is i'm going to split this data into two different tables first one is going to be the customer table which is going to have only the customer information and second one is the credit card table in the credit card table i'll be storing all the information about the credit card and these two tables are related using the customer id okay with that, let's go ahead and create the mapping. I have already created the source definition, a target definition, and started building the mapping. Here I have pulled the source definition to the mapping designer. After the next step, I need to create the normalized transformation. For that, go to the transformation and create. See the normalized transformation is created. This transformation doesn't allow you to pull the column from the previous transformation and create the columns here. So I'm going to do a double click and open the edit mode. And I'm going to the normalizer tab. Here I need to type in the column names. So I'm going to create all the columns manually and type in all the column names. Okay, so I have typed in all the column names, data type, precision and scale. Okay. And if you see here, you can see all the columns related to the customer information and just three columns related to the credit card information. But if you look at the source, we have nine columns related to the credit card information. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to group these three columns together using the level property. I'm going to click on this level and give the name of the level as credit card. Now I'm going to group the remaining two columns to the same level or same group by clicking the level I'm going to do the same thing for the last column as well okay so now here you can see that all the credit card columns are at the same level and this is under the credit card group or level okay so now I am going to say this group or this level is going to repeat three times using the okay property I have changed the occurrence to three with that I have set the properties recorded this normalizer tab now let's go to port tab okay okay you can see there are input ports and output ports and you can see the input ports for the customer information and you can see three different sets for the credit card information this is the first set now you can see the second set and you can see the third set okay and of the output port you can see the customer information then you can see the credit card information and if you notice here you can see two new ports first one is the gk credit card and the second one is gcid credit card okay gk credit card column is going to give you a unique number for each record okay and gcid credit card is going to give you a unique number within the occurring group or within the repeating group okay so gk credit card column can be used as a primary key for the customer table and the combination of GK credit card and the GCID credit card column can be used as a primary key in the credit card table. Okay, but we already have the primary key coming from the source table or source file. So I am going to go to normalizer and set the customer ID as the primary key. Okay, so if you go back and go to port, now we will see that the GK 
the credit card column is gone and now we just have the GC ID credit card okay so with that I have given all the properties required normalizer so I'm going to click on apply and okay uh, now I'm going to map the columns from the source polyfair to the normalizer all the columns led to the customer information and the first set of credit card information second set of credit card information and the third set of credit card information okay the next step remaining is to map the columns from the normalizer to the target table so i'm going to pull the customer table first okay i'm going to map the customer id okay now the credit card table i'm going to map the customer id the sequence number is going to be coming from the gcid credit card column okay and the credit card details okay with that i have mapped all the columns to customer table as well as the credit card table okay and with that the mapping is ready okay here i have read the data from the customer file and using the normalizer i have put the data into customer table and into the credit card table okay so let me do a while date and save okay after the next step i'll be creating the workflow there is not any specific property to be given at the session level for the normalizer so i have created the workflow myself and i can start running the workflow okay if you go to workflow monitor you can see it has just started and succeeded okay and you can see here it has read five records from this source okay and written five records to the customer table and written 15 records to the credit card information so let's go to the a target table and see the values okay okay let me find the query here you can see that we have five records and you can see all the customer id customer name address and all the other details okay and if you go to the credit card information here you can see all the 15 records and you can see for each customer we have three records okay and you can see the sequence number as one two three okay and you can see the credit card details okay the, here i was putting the data in two different tables but if you need to load all this information to a single table you can do that as well okay it's time for the mapping development team when you're modifying an existing object like a mapping or a source or target definition before you make the change you might want to know what all the other objects might get impacted okay for an example, I need to change the uh, customer table definition. Before I make the change, I want to know what all the objects are going to get impacted. For that, what I can do is go to that object, do a right click, and go to the dependencies. Okay. Here you have a couple of options where you can choose the primary key, foreign key dependencies, and you can see if there's any shortcut created for that object. And here you can see all the possible list of objects. I am choosing all the objects then I am clicking OK yeah. now it's going to give you a list of objects which is dependent on the customer table ok this is really useful when you are updating an existing object uh, that's all guys for this video please let me know your questions and feedback on this video in my next session I will be talking about the unconnected lookup and update strategy transformation if you go to my facebook page you'll be able to get a list of training sessions, training manual and much more information just for the fun. Thank you guys.